there's no devil in hell can stop it. So I need you to be ready with your praise. Look to your neighbor and say, are you ready with your praise? He's coming swiftly. He's coming swiftly. Somebody say, not 20, 24. Are we he coming in 23? I don't have to wait till the new year. Say, this year is my year. You shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. While we're standing, go ahead and take your text and exodus. Have your phones or your Bibles, or if you don't have either, it would be on the screens for you. I believe that God declared a word in this house, multiplication, multiplication. And we see the testimonies over and over and over and over again. So one of the things that I also, when we went to, we ended up going to Cleveland in June, May, June. And then our pastor, Dr. Ari Vernon, ends up prophesying over us that he see double in our lives. I said, now look at God, how his word aligns with his will every single time. And so he preached and he's preaching. He said, since it's double, he's preaching a two and one. And I said, well, I think I'm gonna flow into that as well. So today y'all gonna get two for one today. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go two places. So not only are we going to Exodus, we're going to Joshua. So let's start Exodus 14 chapter, 13th verse. And it reads, Then Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Take your stand. Be firm and confident and undismayed. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For those Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. While you keep silent and remain calm. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the sons of Israel to move forward. As for you, lift up your staff, stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide it. Somebody say divide it. Yeah. So that the sons of Israel may go through the middle of the sea on dry land. Let's go to Joshua 6 and 5. It says... Joshua 6 and 5 says, When they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall cry out with a great shout, and the wall of the city will come down in its place, and the people shall go up, each man straight ahead. Look to your neighbor. We've talked about Moses and we've talked about Joshua. Look to your neighbor and say, we are not the same. We are not the same. You may have your seats. COVID did a trip on us. Have you encountered anybody that you saw them before COVID? You did not see them in the middle of COVID. And then when things opened back up, you saw them again and said, wow, they're different. Something's changed about them. I wonder what has happened with them. COVID changed us. When, 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 when we were losing people left and right, that changed us. 
when you would go down your timeline and see people taking their last breath, when we had to watch on video family members because we couldn't go see them, I remember being in the, in the bed, sick myself, praying for people that they've said that will not last throughout the night. That changed us. That, 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 that did something to us. It, 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 it shifted something on the inside of us. The teenagers said it changed us. It changed us. It changed us, and it's okay. And, 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 and one of the things was that the, the, I think that hurt us a lot was the church was closed through all of it. The church was closed now. A lot of other stuff was open. Some of y'all was still at the club. Some of y'all was still at the beach. Yeah, I saw you on TV. I saw y'all on TV. But the church remained closed. And because of that, we begin to see different things fold out in our lives that would not have folded out if this did not happen. The church was closed. And then the church, then, then the fresh church, those of you that was a part of the fresh church, had the nerve to go through a renovation process that took 10 months. So we were still closed, even after everything was back open. And it changed us. Some of us said, you know what, I'm just going to go and I'm going to be a member of Bedside Baptist and I'm going to let the internet tell me what I should know about God. That was the new norm for a while. That was a new, this is what we're doing to be saved. Or this is what we're doing because I just like my Sunday mornings. But it changed us. It's changed us so much. So to, it made me question that when the church closed, did our heart close too? Did it, did it close? Not, 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 not so much to the things we want and our desire, but it closed to God. Things change. We stop reading. We stop worshiping. How many of y'all gathered y'all friends and said, you know what? We're going to take a COVID test. We're good. We're going to, what you call, quarantine together, and we're going to be able to read our Bibles and sing worship. How many of y'all did that? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay. All right. That's the reality of it. We were trying to survive. We was trying to figure this thing out. And in the midst of that, marriages was messing up. In the midst of that, alcohol sales were going sky, were skyrocketing. In the midst of that, people were having lapses of depression that never dealt with depression ever in their lives. In the midst of that, our faith was turning into fear. In the midst of that, tell us your neighbors say something was changing. Something was changing, and the question is, why? Why was it changing? It, I have to ask the question, why? Because it can't be just because the doors of the church was closed. It cannot be that. What, what I understood and just observed, what it wasn't, when the shift happened, a shift in our perspective of God happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A shift in our perspective of God happened first and foremost. It was the first time or the first time in a long time that God's word was not the final say in our lives. Dr. Fossey was. And whatever he said was what it was. And he became the navigator of our faith instead of Jesus. He became the word. He became what it's supposed to have been. He became everything that we needed. <laughs> and we, so we, we started to shift our idea, our perspective of God. And the dangerous thing about shifting our perspective of God is when we don't see him the same, we don't pursue him the same. 
We, 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 our pursuit looks different. When we don't see him as Jehovah Jireh, our provider, we tend to go other routes when it comes to our need for provision. When we don't see him as Jehovah Shalom, our peace, we begin to seek after other things for our peace. When we don't see him as Jehovah Rapha, in whose report should we believe? We believe the report of the Lord. If we don't see him as that, we will start containing and hanging on to every report but the report of the Lord when our perspective shift because here it is our perception of God determines our pursuit of God our perception of God will always determine our pursuit of God. But if we see him right, we will respond right. And I want to know about you, but I just got to take a second to praise God that even though I have not always seen him right, he has always seen me right. Because here it is, he's always the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he is not, his action is not predicated upon ours. His action is predicated upon his goodness. His goodness is not predicated on whether I'm good. His goodness is predicated on whether he's good. And he's right, even if I don't see him as right. But however, he still saw me right. He saw me right in the middle of my trouble. He saw me right in the middle of my pain he saw me right in the middle of my trial look to your neighbor say he saw me he saw me he saw me when I couldn't go do it for myself he saw me when I couldn't get up on my own he saw me when I was down dirty he saw me when I needed to get up just like the way man he saw him even when he couldn't see himself look to your neighbor say he saw me right he didn't see my issue he saw my destiny look to your neighbor he saw me right he saw me right. He saw me right. Because he's good. Not because of our goodness. He's good because he's God. He's good because he's God. We're looking at the text here. And I told you I'm going to give y'all two for one. So we're going to talk about Moses and Joshua. So Moses, Moses is our Hebrew hero. He was born to two Hebrew parents. We know the story. It was a decree to kill all the, all the baby boys. So the, the parents got him, wrapped him up, put him in a river, and sent him down. And two Egyptian, and, and the Egyptian lady rescued him. Rescued him, but here's the thing. God calls him now. God calls him now to be the deliverer and rescue the children of Israel from the same people that rescued him in Egypt. What about that? What if God turned you on the people that helped you? Ain't that something for God to do? <laughs> and then there's Joshua. Joshua, we don't have time to stay there. Joshua, the conqueror of Jericho. We know Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. We know that story. But also Joshua was the predecessor of Moses. Yeah, he came right after Moses. He, he was passed the torch to Moses now to lead the children of Israel into a promised land that Moses was not allowed to go to. Now imagine that. Let's hear your name and say, God be doing some crazy stuff. I know y'all want to say it. Y'all want to say it. He said, God be doing some crazy stuff. But here it is. Here it is. Here it is. The, 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 the I guess the combination of the both is both had different past. Both had different pedigree. And watch this. Both had different plans. Yeah. 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 Both had different past. Both had different paths. They 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 had they had different paths. Some 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 had this. Some had that. He did this. Joshua did that. It was a whole different situation. They had different paths. They had different pedigree. They had and and here's the thing. But God gave both of them different sets of plan, and that is where I want to park. See one. See one. Moses when he faced problems, Moses went and prayed. Yeah. Yeah, when Moses, when he faced problems, he, 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 he went to prayer. Because y'all don't know, what, what y'all don't know about Moses, Moses had an attitude problem. Moses had this thing about getting tripped up when people start acting crazy. 
So he makes it a habit. This wasn't always his thing. He makes it a habit. When he sees things, he begins to pray. Look to your neighbor and say, you better be glad I pray. Ooh, Jesus. God has changed some minds in prayer. Somebody say amen. But here's the thing. The thing about Moses is that was good until God was giving him something else to do. Sometimes God will give you something else to do. See, our time with God will keep us calm and collected, but it also could be our biggest crutch. Yeah, prayer can turn into procrastination. Prayer can be something that we're using not to do what it is that we really know we need to do. Well, let me pray about it. No, you already know what you, you already know that you need to delete that phone number. You already know you need. You already know. Well, let me pray about it. Let me see what the Lord got to say in this season. He already said it. You already know what you got to do. Because here's the, here's the thing. Exodus 14 tells us that Moses, Moses is talking to his people, the children of Israel. We can put it on the screen. He's talking. He said, listen, God is going to do all of these things. And he's going to do this. And we got to be confident. We got to stand firm. We got to do all of these things. And the Lord will fight for us. You just got to keep silent and remain calm. That sounds real good. And typically, that is what God does. But watch this. Then the Lord says, Moses, says to Moses, why are you crying? Wait. I thought that's what you wanted me to do. Because I cry in your presence. And I fall out and I worship you. And I get what it is that I need and I feel good. But God tells Moses this time. Somebody say this time. He tells him something different. He said, no, 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 get up. <laughs> he, 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 he said, listen, wh wh why are you crying? I, I know that worked last season, but in this season, I need you to get up. When he talked to Samuel, the prophet, he tells Samuel, like, how long, Samuel, will you mourn? For a season, that was okay. But for this season, I need you to get up and do what I tell you to do. Look to your neighbor and say, this season, I need you to get up. I need you to. My season is shifted. Tell me, it's time to get up. It's time to get up. It's time to do something because every battle does not require the same battle plan. Every battle. You can't fight every battle the same way because you don't have the same devil. They used to tell me, they said, there's a different devil for different levels. So you got to weigh it out and say, God, what do you want me to do this time? Because what I did for the last devil may not work for this devil. He said, stretch your hands and divide it. Divide it. Separate it. This, make it different. This, this, this can't be the same. You need to separate it. You need to divide it in order to go through this. You need to divide that thing before you go through. And I know, I know you've been the good Christian. And I know you're not confrontational. But sometimes you got to stretch your hand, put your hands up, and make some difference between you and them. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you got to divide in order to conquer. I know you're not confrontational. And I know you're trying to be a good Christian. No, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to tell him I heard him. Sometimes you got to call that devil out and say, yes, I heard you. Yes, I seen the subliminal post. Yes, I know you talking about me. Yes, I know you tried to make a plan and plot to destroy me. I just can't. I'm not going to, I'm not going to act crazy. I just need you to know that I know. I know. I know. Let's hear they will say, if I just, because I ain't act crazy, that don't mean I ain't know. Sometimes you got to divide it. Don't be waiting around on God to divide it. No, he wants you to do it. He wants you to make the call. God just removed him out of my life.
Lord, if you don't want me to do this, it just, just, just hit me with a sign. No, you know, you, you know what you need to be doing. You made the call. You send the text message. You send the email. You call them over and tell them this ain't going to happen no more. God, I just pray that they car break down and they ain't able to make it. What? God is not doing something that he's giving you power to do. He only do what you can't do, but he will not do what you won't do. He's giving you the power. He's giving you the staff. Lift your hands and divide it. Turn shout right here and say, divide it. Divide it. Divide it. Divide it. Divide it. Divide it. He says in James, he says, resist the devil and he will flee. Now, sometimes we think resist means to retreat. But resisting does not mean retreat. He never called you to retreat. He never called you to cancel the war. He never called you to pull back. No, resistance, that means there's a confrontational thing that happening. There's something. I'm standing in front of you, and I'm telling you what's not going to be. I'm resisting you, and then your enemy will flee. He's not calling you to retreat. You think, that, you think David was in the, was in the wilderness? I'm like, oh, bear. Oh, precious big thing you are. I don't want any confrontation. I just want you to not eat me. Do you really think that that was going on when David was fighting animals, demons that was trying to destroy him? Do you really think that that what was going on? Because I, I think sometimes, here it is, because here it is, this is the thing. We try to be like God, right? As much as possible, we try to be like God. But I think we forget the divine dualistic nature of God. I think we forget that he is the lion and the lamb. I think we forget that he's grace, but he's straight out truth. I think we forget that he is the rock of our salvation and a rock in the weary land. I, I think we forget that the cross was rugged and it was righteous. It was beautiful and it was bloody. Everything about him is never one dimensional. He is always revealing himself of who he is in our lives. And because he created us, he created us in his image. And you're more than this or that. Look to your neighbor and say, you're this and that. Yeah, you can pray, you can post, and you can protest. I can't hear nobody. You can do all of it. He's this, and he's that. We got to get out of the habit of trying to avoid war. Because many times in the Bible, God created war for our development. You're wondering why you're in that situation, why God put you in the midst of those kind of people. He set you up to, treat, to, to have to look at the, after these people because you made the mistake and, made the, and said the prayer, God, give me patience. You, you said a prayer, said, God, make me more like you. <laughs> you said a prayer and said, God, I just want to be pleasing and do your will. And God said, oh. Oh, really? Because <laughs> here's the thing, even the wilderness, I know, and I'm about to mess about 20 people theology up. We think the wilderness was to get Egypt out of them. We said sometimes you just got to get it out of them. So they had to go through wilderness for 40 years because sometimes you can't get the, you can't get the hood out of people. You, you, the people are just hood. You got to get the hood out of the person, right? But here's the thing. They never needed Egypt out of them. That was a process that don't happen overnight. That wasn't the reason they was in wilderness. The scripture tells us the reason they was in the wilderness because they was not prepared for war. The promised land required a battle. The promised land required battles. 
and they was not strong enough. They was not, they was not patient enough. They, so God sent them through trials in the wilderness to build them as the warriors they needed to be. Turn to somebody and say, I know you're a worshiper, but you need to have a warrior side. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got you to gotta be ready to war. You got to be every, You got to be ready. Yeah, I'm praying today, but, but, but today I'm pushing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Today I'm giving pressure today. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's, that's what I'm doing in this season. Look to your neighbor and say, oh, no, this is the season of pressure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not trying to settle score. If he's settled score, that means there is a worthy opponent. But we serve a God that has no equal. We serve a God that has no rival. Any war that he is a part of, he wins. And let me free some of y'all today. God does not desire for you to be peace with the, have peace within the enemy of your soul. He is not interested in you having peace with the enemy of your soul. He's not interested in you having peace with the enemy of your soul. Well, we can just be friends. No, you can't be friends. He's not interested in you having peace with the enemy of your soul. They are not, a, they are not an assignment to you. They're an assassin to your character. They're an assassin to your purpose. They're an assassin to your destiny. Well, I was just put in their life because I just know. And I, no. They, they came to distract you. They have an assignment to kill you. They have an assignment to get you off track. Look to your neighbor and say, we, we, we're not being, being at peace with the enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't be at peace with the enemy. We can't be at peace with the enemy. That's what I like about Joshua because he was always ready to war. <laughs> he was all, what, what, huh, huh? Say, what's the, huh, huh? Yeah, that was just some of y'all talking about, yeah, that's me, that's me. That's me. I'm just ready at all times. But here it is. Here it is. There's nothing wrong. But, but here's the thing with Joshua. God didn't give him those commands that he gave Moses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave Moses, come on, be strong. Put out your staff. Divide it. He tells Joshua, be quiet. Walk around seven times and cry. Now, Joshua is a warrior. He was ready for the warrior instructions. But he says, walk around, be quiet, lead out with, with praise, put, put Judah first. Y'all go. Yeah, yeah. And, and then when it's time to knock the wall down, cry. I need to put this plain for y'all. Joshua was a trained warrior. See, Moses fought battles with his hands up. Joshua fought battles with his hands, period. And he tells Joshua, no, no, no. That's not what I want you to do. I know, you, I know, I, I know Moses trained you. But this is what I want you to do. Because here it is. Sometimes God won't instruct us in the area of our strengths. He'll instruct us in the areas of our weakness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because here's the thing. Our strength naturally is often the weakest area spiritually. You know why that is? Because whenever we're, whenever we're good at the most, we tend to give God the least. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm good at that. I don't need to pray about that. I already know how to do that. Oh, oh no, 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 no. I already, right. I already know how to do that. I don't need to pray. Oh, I already know. I already knew that. Know how to do that. So I'm managing that well. I just need him to handle the stuff that I don't know how to do. So what God does, He goes around and says, "Oh, okay. Okay. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna tell you to do something that you're not strong enough to do." <laughs> I'm going to give you something to do that you're not skilled enough to do. I'm going to give you something. I, and I, but I know that's hard. 
for the for the warriors, that's hard because the first first thought is if I can do it, I should do it. Yeah, right? Why shouldn't I do something that I know how to do? Because God, sometimes what God wants to do is for not you to get the glory, but he get the glory. Sometimes he, he don't want it to be set up that people can say, oh, okay, they did a good job. He want to set that thing up so good to say it was nobody but God that stepped in and pushed that thing and placed that thing where it's supposed to be. Sometimes he's trying to get the glory out of your life. So he switched things around and said, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. I don't want you to do that. I want you to do this. Yeah, yeah, I know you're comfortable with doing that, but I want you to do this. I know your personality is comfortable with doing that, but I want you to act like this. This is what God would do. Say, God be doing something crazy. One thing we know about God, but God is consistent. And God consistently do some crazy stuff. But he always got something. He has a reason behind it. Look to your neighbor. He got a reason behind it. He has a reason behind it. But so you have Moses and you have Joshua in this juxtaposition of their personalities, of, the, of their character, of their past, and of their, the, uh, uh, of their pedigree. They're different. So because they're different, God dealt with them different. So when he comes, he came to Moses. He comes to him in this flaming fire, this flaming fire. Now, in the Old Testament, what fire meant was a, a, a manifestation presence of God. So he comes to Moses in fire. Joshua, same encounter. Tells Joshua the same exact thing. Take off your shoes, Joshua. You are standing on holy ground. But here it is. He shows himself to Joshua not as fire. He shows himself to Joshua as a warrior. So he shows himself to the worshiper as his manifested presence. He shows himself to the warrior as the captain of the army. God is intentional in the way that he shows himself to us. Why my situation ain't like everybody else's? Because he's intentional the way he shows himself to us. Why my, why my trial will last it longer than they trial? Because he's intentional in the way that he shows himself to each of us. Because here's the thing, if we view the messenger right, we will view the message right. And what is important to God, if you have been in Bible study, we on, we on a series called Frequency, How to Hear the Voice of God. And one of the things you have to get right is the message. But it's hard to get the message right when you see the messenger wrong. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we question his ability. Sometimes, sometimes we question his timing. Sometimes we question his motives because we don't see him right. And because we can't see him right, we don't hear right. And because we don't hear right, we don't do right. We, 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 don't, we don't do right. And, and, and so when in this hearing, we have to change our hearing and filter it of what it is that we know about God. That's what we got to do. We got to change our hearing. Somebody say, change your hearing. Change your hearing. Change your hearing. See, see, see it, wasn't, it wasn't that you wasn't good enough. It was that the whole, the, 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 see, 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 these people left your life and relationships ended and things didn't go well. Things didn't go how you wanted. They laid you off for your job. Look to your neighbor and say, it's not because, it wasn't because you was good enough. It wasn't good enough. Not because God failed you. But here it is, he favored you. 
Yeah, yeah. When you see it right, you don't see that God failed you. You see that he favored you because here it is. The, why, the reason why they left you and the reason why it wasn't a failure but it was favor on your life was because, the, because God, God, God orchestrated the breakup. God orchestrated the misplacement. God orchestrated the movement. Why? Because they wasn't good enough for you. That wasn't good enough for your purpose. That wasn't good enough for the assignment that was on your life. That wasn't good enough to raise you. That wasn't good enough to mold you. That wasn't good enough to develop you. So God took you out of a situation prematurely. Why? Because he didn't want the damage that they would do in, their, in, in your life. So he removed you because he understood they would have did more damage in your life than they would have did outside of your life. And God, always have your best intentions in mind. Always. But your neighbor say it wasn't failure, it was favor. Yeah, the reason, the reason, the reason why you got let off. Let me tell you, let me, let me tell you the reason you got laid off your job. Yeah. It wasn't about, man, pastor told me to try God. I tried it. I paid my tithe for six weeks. Then I got laid off my job. God, you failed me. Well, if we hear right, we'll understand that everything God does, he does intentionally. And everything he does for those that he loves, he does it for our good. So if, he lay, if you were laid off the job, that means he allowed you to be laid off the job. And if he allowed you to be laid off the job, he permitted it. And if he permitted it, he's going to give you, get you through the process. Why? Because he's processing you to be something better than what it is that you was before it happened. So we understand here it is. If he laid me off the job, he was protecting me from something. Yeah, 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 yeah. If he laid me off the job, he was building something in me. Yeah, maybe, just maybe, that conversation would have led you down a brick, uh, the wrong path in a brick wall. That conversation you used to always get into with that coworker that was gossiping all the time. Maybe he needed to divide y'all. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, that little giggling conversation in the break room would have led you cheating, to your, uh, cheating on your spouse. And you weren't strong enough to hold it. So he intervened and divided it for you. Let your neighbor say, thank God he divides it for us. <laughs> Sometimes he divides it for us. Sometimes he divides it for us. Why it is, here it is, here it is. Because the God you see is the God you pursue. If you see God... As a failing God, it's hard, to, it's hard to have faith in a failing God. If you don't see him right, you won't pursue him right, and you won't do right. Here's the important thing about proper eyesight. Proper sight is the door that leads to a surrendered will and a submitted life. Let me say that again. Proper sight is the door that leads to a surrendered will and a submitted life. Somebody say surrendered. Submitted. Surrendered, 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 surrendered. I don't know if you remember when you submitted. You just, you're surrendered to God. Do anybody remember that moment, that time? Like you, you was like, you know what? I'm just done. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to give it over to him because this is what I need to do. I, I, I'm just going to surrender. Sometimes you got to have surrendered faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what surrendered faith is, the behavior acknowledgement that God's way is the best way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Surrendered faith is the behavioral acknowledgement that God's way is the best option. I've tried it my way. I tried my own way. I've wrestled with him long enough. I've argued with him long enough. I fought with him long enough. Now it's time for me to surrender because if I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. 
But turn to your neighbor and say, there's another level. <laughs> there's another level. Somebody say submitted faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, 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 surrendered faith is acting accordingly. I may not want to all the time, but I'm going to do it because it's the best option. That surrendered faith, but submitted faith is, it is the behavior acknowledgement, not that God's way is the best option, but God's way is the only. The only, op there is no other option but to do what it is God is calling me to do. God wants us to get to the level past surrender and get to submit it. The day of I do, I was surrendered to him, but I was not submitted to him. It took years, if I can be honest, so, so, so that I can get to the place where I was willing to be submitted to him. I would fight my way, not physically, because I ain't no fight. I'm a worshiper, all right? It's got to get twisted, but I am from the country. I do have a list. I can flip it. But naturally, I'm not a fighter. I'm not a fighter. But I would scream and fight my way because this is what I want to do. And how in the world could somebody tell me what I should be doing and I actually supposed to listen to what it is that you're saying? Can I be honest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, he was the best option. Come on, somebody. So I, I surrendered easily. But the question is, was he the only? Did I see him as his way being the only way? To where I understood that he's, his, mold, his moves and his motives was aligned with God's plan for my life. So I would submit to his moves even though I did not understand them because I understood the motive, his heart behind them. It took me a while to get there. <laughs> and vice versa, it was the same thing. Same thing. Same thing. I think he submitted probably a little faster than I did. I, I don't know. I was a little hard-headed. I was just struggling. <laughs> I was struggling, ladies. Because there's a difference between surrendered and submitted. It's a difference between, between God, I got to do this and I get to do this. There's a different language that I got to serve God and I get to serve God. There's a difference between I got to serve and I get to serve. There's a difference between I got to go to church and I get to go to church. There's a difference between I got to give my tithes to I got. There's a difference between I got Because the only person that got to is a person that really don't want to do. Well, you, you, you never seen someone that worked for the, for the White House and say, well, let me just go work for the president today. I got to serve the president. No, they stand there. I get to serve the president. I get to serve my country. Anything that you're proud of and you invested in and you sold out to, you don't got to do anything you get. To do. God wants us to change our faith to a, from a got to to a get to. A got to to a get to. Here it is because here's the difference. If you don't know the difference, here it is. Here it is. It's going to be real quick. A got to faith. God is the anesthesia to life. I got to do this. Or I'm going I'm to lose my mind. I got to do this. Or I'm going to go crazy. I got to do this because I got to try something different. I got to do it. And, and here, here's the thing. That's a good starting place. That, that, that's a good starting place. Got to faith. But look to your neighborhood. There's another level. Yeah, God is trying to get you from got to the get to. 
Because when in your get to faith, get to is not God is the anesthesia, but God is the antidote. He is the answer. He is the way, the truth, and the light. He is the antidote to night life, not just a numbing mechanism that is temporary. He's the antidote. He is the answer to the got to faith. Turn to your neighbor and say, which one are you? Do you got get to? You, you get to faith or got to? Huh, huh, which one? Don't, don't wait on the answer because ain't none of your business. Uh, but, but are you at get to or got to? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? And we're about to close here. Joshua. Joshua is the predecessor of Moses. He's coming after Moses. Moses was his example. Moses was the person that was setting the bar. Moses was the one that was teaching him the way to go. But in this situation where Moses is at the end of his journey, Moses is still leading the people of Israel, the children of Israel, into the promised land. And listen, 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 listen. I need you to get this lesson here. The people as usual, starts to complain. The people start fussing. They get discouraged. They need water. They thirsty. They hungry. They need Moses to do something. Moses goes to God in prayer. God speaks to Moses, tells Moses what to do. I need you to go down, get the rock, speak to the rock, and water is going to come out. He speaks to God. God speaks to him, gives him the answer to the problem. He goes down, gets the rock, but he do not speak to the rock. He hit the rock. Hmm. However, the water still came out. Let's back up. Moses goes to God, God tells him the answer, the instructions of what he needs to do to solve the issue and the problem. Moses says, okay, God, he goes down, gets sidetracked by the people. He gets the rock, picks it up, and instead of speaking to the rock, like God said, he hits the rock, but the water still comes out. Wait. Moses speaks to God. God tells Moses what he's supposed to be doing. Moses don't do what God says he's supposed to do, but however, he got the result that he wanted. How is that? How is that that we are so huge about obeying God and that and, and, and the fact of the matter is you can still get the same result if you don't obey him? Have you ever thought about that? Some of y'all are like, let me get up out of here because the only reason I was here because I couldn't do, I couldn't get it together. Here it is. You can get the same thing. Now, no other church is going to tell you this. You can get the... You can do what God didn't say and the water still come out. Some of y'all were like, I should have. You know what? I should have hit them. <laughs> I should have. You can get the same thing. The water still come out. But here's the difference. Even though they look the same, well, they wasn't the same. One of the results was attached to a passion. The other result was attached to a promise. One of the results was driven off of desire. One of the results was driven off what you wanted. One of the results, if I stayed up long enough, if I, if, if I sweated enough, if I made the right calls, if I went to enough networking events, if I pulled too many, enough people off their ladder to get on, if I did enough of that, I can still be what I want to be. If I get enough degrees, I can still get that job I want. 
if I do enough posting, I can still get that many followers I want without obeying God. Here it is. When you do what God does, what he wants you to do, it may look the same, but it's different. When they arrive, they arrive off passion. When you arrive, you arrive with a promise, a promise that says, if you wait on the Lord, he shall renew your strength. You shall mount up like wings like an eagle. You shall run and not get weary. You shall walk and not faint. A promise is attached to when you arrive. The promise is, if you try me at my word, my blessing will run you down and overtake you. So when I do, when I obey, it's not just obeying. There is residual effects when I obey, let's see your neighbor say, I'm arriving with a promise. I'm arriving with the promise, the promise that is going to get me to where it is I need to be and still be happy. And still have my peace. And still have my character. And still have my mind. It's attached to a promise. So, your passion will get you there but it won't keep you there. You will only go as far as you can work. You can only go as far as your abilities take you. But there's something about God that puts his super on our natural. That even when we're tired and even when we're worn out, his spirit gives us the grace to do what it is that we need to do. I know it's sometimes you done did some things and you say it was only because of his grace. I didn't have the I didn't have the energy. I didn't have the network. I didn't have the pedigree. I didn't have the certificate. I didn't have the diploma. I didn't have the degree. It was nobody but Jesus. Why? Because my obedience was attached to a promise. That he would never leave me or forsake me. He would be with me always to the end of the earth. Why? Because that's who God is. That is who God is. Turn to your neighbor and say, my result is attached to a promise. Why didn't Joshua, we ended, why didn't Joshua, Richard, why didn't Joshua, why didn't Joshua, why didn't he repeat what Moses did. Why? He was his teacher. He, he, he was the one that showed him everything. Why didn't he repeat it? Why didn't he say, you know what? I'm going to just do my thing. God's still going to do what he's going to do. Why? Think about that. Because a lot of times, people's voices are louder than God's voice. We tend to lean more on what people say than what God say. But when God tells Joshua to do that, and it was against every single bone in his body, he obeys it. Because Joshua said, we are not the same. We are not the same. We, 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 we are not the same. I, I, yes, I want the result. But I don't want the result because of my passion. I want the result because that is what's promised to me. Because his blessings make it the rich and addeth no sorrow. I don't want it my way. I want it God's way. And if I go God's route, he's promised me that I will get the God result. And yes, it may take me two more years to get it. Yes, it may take me five more years to reach the same place they reached in two. Yes, 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 that may be the case. But when I arrive, our arrival is not the same. I've gained something that they don't have. 
There's a peace that I have that they don't have. There's a love that I have that they don't have. There's a healed heart that I have that they don't have. They moving, but they ain't healed. They moving, but they ain't happy. They moving, but they, they, they're struggling. They, they moving, but they're miserable. They are not the same. When you move, God is moving with you. And even in your most tired state, he's your strength, even in your weakness. That is just who he is. He's waiting on you to be weak. You're like, whoa, 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 no, 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 I got you, I got you, I got you. You can do this. They're out there alone. They're out there trying to make it on their own strength, on their own stamina, on their own pedigree. But not only do you have what God has given you on the inside, you have all of heaven backing you up. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can go to war with confidence knowing that all you got to do is really just show up and hear God. God, what you want me to do? God, God, what you want me to do? What, 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 what is it that you want me to do? And it's that easy. It's that easy. It's that easy. Stand to your feet. I, I want you to have faith enough to worship. And I want you to have faith enough to war. I want you to have faith enough to cry. I want you to have faith enough to be courageous. Whatever it is that the Lord says, He said, whatever thy will, let thy will be done. Nevertheless, my will, nevertheless, my, my, my design, my plan, nevertheless, my personality, whatever it is that you want me to do, nevertheless, my will, but let thy will be done. 